Hey guys, uh, Tim here. So by the time you're listening to this episode, you're going to know uh, you're going to know more news than James or I knew when we recorded this episode. Um, we do talk about it. Uh, Alex takes his time to get to it, which bit of a move if you ask me. But anyway, um, we thought with everything going on and everybody wanting to hear everything going on, um, we should release this early. So we talked with Sirius XM. They gave us permission to release this episode a day early. Uh, so enjoy. This is off track with Hinch and Rossi. Um, Alice, why are you in, why are you in Gateway already? Don't you test tomorrow? Aren't you like a fly in the morning of kind of guy these days? When have I ever once flown in the morning of anything in my life? Yeah, I don't know. It just sounded cool. I'm not Marco. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely would land morning of if it's an option. That's true. Um, yeah, um, I yeah, I'm on track at 9 a.m. tomorrow for some more hybrid IndyCar testing. So let me Yay. ask you this, and I apologize for my crunching, but I am obnoxiously hungry right now. Um, we were talking about this a little bit, how it's it's like kind of cool that you're getting to do all this testing because you know we used to bitch about how you'd get three days of testing for an entire off season and like three days in season, and it sucks. And now yeah. you're getting like a million days because I know it's not all a million useful days because a lot of it was the early days of developing the hybrid, which is, is suboptimal. But do you like it? Are you happier from a seat time standpoint in 2024 than you were in 2023? Um, well, that's not apples to apples because last year I was learning a new team and a new engine manufacturer and new people and new ways of doing things. So we're not at that stage anymore. Um, but yes, I think as a, as a race car driver, you want to drive the race car. Like we, we often talk about how much of our lives and our, and our job is not doing the thing that we love, which is driving. So yeah, it is nice. It's just, um, like beggars can't be choosers, but like it's the schedule has been tough, man. It's I've never been, found that to be true. Well, no, we know, Tim. <laughs> yes, yeah, you are yeah. very choosy for someone who begs as much as you do. Right. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. It's it's everyone is just a little bit on edge, I think. Um, not me, but like the team is it's been hard. It's been hard to convert to this sort of system midseason. Um, yeah. Obviously, mid-season the first stuff. race of it, the first race of it is coming up this weekend. So like my crew chief is a little bit stressed that, you know, he's here in St. Louis working on a test car and not prepping our race car and, and all that sort of thing. But ultimately I do think it is, has been a net positive for us, um, to be one of the teams is getting to, to put so many miles on it. Um, not specifically from a hybrid standpoint, but more so w- for the St. Louis example is, you know, it's a different downforce, um, package this year you're allowed to run more. So we're going to get back into the days of, of kind of the aero kit era where you were trimming and qualifying and, and that sort of thing. So from that standpoint, it's, it's super useful and enjoyable. Um, ticking off checklists for the hybrid, not so much, but Hey, it's all part of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you bring up a great point though. Like I was just talking to a mechanic about the schedule and how much work it's been like, <clears throat> They're testing so much in general, right, compared to what we've been used to doing. And it's these are not the days when they had, like, dedicated test teams and stuff like that. Like, all the mechanics and engineers, all the men and women that are at the racetrack all weekend for the races are the ones that are turning these cars around and doing engineering reports to go testing two days later in Iowa and then come home. And then you're turning those cars around. You're getting them ready for mid-Ohio. And, oh, sorry, we're going to throw Gateway in between that. Like, this this summer has been an absolute grind for the people of IndyCar and for all the fans out there listening. If you're at a race, you know, over the next however many races we have left, eight races, whatever it is, go hug a mechanic. Go pat an engineer on the back, you know. Go 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 hand some a, of a, them. 
Like a, a lot of them <laughs> take after me. They don't love touch. So mm. I don't know. All right. Well, just tell them you know. appreciate all the hard work then because there you go. There's uh there's a lot of people that, like you say, are, are getting, getting near the end of their wits <laughs> on just the whole program. <laughs> and then like, and then you look ahead of the schedule next year and you're like, man, how are we going to do this next year? It's going to be a real, real challenge, I think, for a lot of people next year, which is what I was talking about when I went frozen and you guys didn't hear me, but the soundtrack will still work fine. <laughs> oh, I was trying to make that sentence as long as possible until it unfroze. Um, anyway, okay, so talking about testing, you just got back from Iowa. How'd it go? Um, Iowa, so Iowa's repaved now, um, or the corners, I should say, have new pavement. And it is, um, it's a nice cost awesome. savings trick is just only pave the corners. It's, and it's weird. It's like, the, <laughs> it's like the shortest track on earth. And like, there wasn't the budget to just do the little straights <laughs> in between the corners, but whatever. That's such a good um, point. The, the surface uh, is like a five or six percent higher grip than it was. Um, obviously, the other thing about Iowa was the the bumps. Um, the bumps in the corners are gone, so we were going like it was almost a second faster than we were in qualifying um, last year. It's almost flat. Um, you know, I know that Colton, who was the quickest car, was flat in one and two, and it had a small lift in three and four. Um, you will be flat in qualifying. Um, the concern is because it's now so high grip, um, there's very little dig, which for all of us that love slash hate the Iowa race, um, that is what makes that race so amazing and arguably the best one on the calendar is there's like a two and a half to three second differential between new tires and, and stint tires. As it was at the test, um, there was like you could literally start and end on the exact same lap time. Any sort of grip that you would lose from the tire would be made up from black. Made up. What is happening in your hotel room? What is that? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> you, should, you should maybe leave. You should probably run. <laughs> No, this is going to be good content. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so there, it's it's essentially no dig, which is a problem um, because if everyone's kind of running around almost flat out at the bottom of the racetrack, and even if you can get to lane two, it's more distance. It's not going to be the race that we have been used to seeing. That being said, Firestone acknowledges that and is working on a tire uh, change that in theory will bring deg back, but... It's an unknown because we're going to show up to the race weekend with it and hope. I know that one of the things that a lot of the guys were talking about was that like lane two was not a thing, which uh, this is the part I don't understand. This is what I don't get. <clears throat> and maybe I'm going to answer my own question here, but like if, if it's, if everything's got so much grip because it's newly repaved, why does lane two not work? But then at the same time, I think, well, when we, re- we repave a road course, the racing line is awesome and everything offline sucks. So is it just that? It's just that same phenomenon? I don't know. I don't know why lane two on all of those doesn't work most of the time without yeah, serious help. true. Like, I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't. Ironically, so, this was the one it, place that it did, and now it doesn't. <laughs> well, I think, it, I think it did because it was equally as, lane one was equally as so like right. there was no difference in running there because they were both terrible options. Right. Um, I, I, I don't think it's a million miles away. I don't think it's like the days of, of 2020 like in Texas, Texas or, or that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, I think it'll need a, a high line session, which the series has been super open to doing in the past. Um, and I think if that happens, it will be viable. That being said, because there's no deg, it doesn't really like it doesn't do much for you because it's still more track distance. So like, what, you're, there's no point of going up there because it's not like you need to go to lane two Clean to protect air, the tire. At least. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Um, so yeah, so that was Iowa. Um, Gateway is going to be. Uh, I kind of 
mentioned it, but so Gateway, they're they're bringing back kind of the double flap rear wing. So it's going to be like 500 plus more pounds of downforce than we had there last year. And in layman's the terms, ga- the, that's a that's a ton more downforce. That's that a lot a, more downforce, a big change. That is a metric ton, yes. Um, the thing is, who knows what the hybrid weight's going to do with that? Like, right. Will that be enough to, to compensate? Maybe. I'll let you know next week um, after mid-Ohio. Um, so, and really, on. yes. Sorry. No, go ahead. Yo. I just want to go back to Iowa because that race back in like the manufacturer kit days, you know, it was flat or very close to flat and qualifying similar kind of lap times when we had a bit, bunch more downforce, even as the track was kind of falling apart. But the, the, the years where it was like really big downforce and we didn't kind of have the same sort of deck that we've seen the last few years, it was a very physical race because hey, it's always hot as there. But you're, you know, you're going really quick now around the corners and you're doing it for almost the entire day. It was a very physical race. The last, I don't know, five, six, seven years, whatever it's been, it was much less physical because you're losing two to three seconds a lap in lap time, which on a 17 second lap percentage wise, and is an insane amount of lap time. And it was much, yes, metric done. And so the physicality after the first 15 laps just kind of went down exponentially until the only physical part about it was the death grip on the steering wheel because you were terrified you were going to crash every corner. So now that it's not bumpy and high grip and nearly flat and no deg, I mean, I assume we're predicting this to be like a, a very big kicking for the drivers physicality wise. Yes. Plus the extra weight from the hybrid. So the steering weight goes up every time you raise the weight of the car. And there's nothing really you can do to lighten the steering load, right? Unlike on a road course, there are a couple of things you can do with different steering ratios, um, different racks or, or, uh, caster. You just, you can't hear me. Can you? (laughs) I can. Okay. Um, so there's, there's really nothing you can do about it from a setup standpoint. You're just, the steering's going to be heavy (laughs) and off you go. What sucks is I can see you guys fine. <laughs> are we back? Are we are we are we back? Okay. Basically, I'm just saying the steering's going to be super heavy. There's nothing you can do about it. You're right. Yes. Before we before we talk about that, uh, we should probably talk about some IndyCar news. Did something happen? Did I miss it? Uh, it's happening on Wednesday. Um, I am no longer driving for Aero McLaren. Um. Christian Lungard is getting in the seven car. So that was announced yesterday, guys. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. That, okay. Yeah. So this is, listeners at home, we're learning this as you are. This is not, we had no inside scoop on this. This prick here just dropped that on us in (laughs) the middle of the show. And I'm surprised how much he's enjoying it. I'm not, but I am. Uh, okay. Is this for real? Is this a joke? <clears throat> it is not a joke. Um, and it's, it's okay, guys. Uh, we, listen, this is a, this is a sport that is a business that we have talked about. We could not find common ground. Um, and so we're going a different direction and it's, it's all good. It's, it's not a bad thing. It ended or is going to end very amicably, but we still have, ton of races left um and so that is the main focus there you go um so Tim is very say, confused i thought i thought you meant like it was going to be announced like they're you're out for the rest of the season <laughs> like, no. I they were gonna, okay no, okay no, that's no, no. why i thought this was a joke <laughs> this, yeah. no this is very much for 2025 okay um, okay yeah <laughs> Now, do you understand why I was as freaked out as I was? <laughs> I was like, I like why would you be testing? Yeah. All right. Can you talk <laughs> about any any point. future plans or is that uh, um, is that going to be for yet. another week? OK, not yet. Right. Um, but it's it's I'm excited about it. It's. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't I can't give any detail, but it's all it's all coming from a place of positivity, guys. There is nothing there's nothing bad being shared today. It is just a change of scenery um 
that was not for a very long time, but that's okay. Yeah. Look, hey man, change is, change is good. Change is something that happens. All good things change must come something. to an end and yeah. all that. Yeah. I mean, you hope it's good, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, change is change. For a yeah. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you have your reasons and I'm sure at some point we can dive deeper into those if you wish. Um, but as you say, there's still a lot of racing left in the season and you guys have been on a pretty good run on the seven yeah. car. So, yeah, yeah. uh, no, and I think I think we're getting to the best part of our schedule. So um, there's a lot to look forward to, honestly. So none of this really changes. I mean, as you very intelligently pointed out there, Tim, like I am still testing. So like nothing's changing from the team's process and, and their way of going about this. And we're still doing what we need to do to try and get two cars in the top five to attend the season. So that's that's goal number one. All right. Um, well, look, I'm very glad that you, you did this, um, in this episode because you obviously being the only one of the three of us that knew this news was coming out on Wednesday, uh, we would have had a lot of angry listeners that saw that press release on Wednesday. Like, Oh, Mm. I can't wait to listen off track this week. And all we're doing is talking about Iowa testing. (laughs) They'd be like, you guys and suck at this. Yes. Which, by Correct. the way, we still waited like 15 minutes to get I to that. <laughs> I, I just wanted to know like, we were, like, like I, I was what waiting. What the hell? I was waiting when until you, the transition into something else came out, and then I was going to do it. Like, so. this, I asked before we recorded, like I always do, hey, do we have anything we need to go over before we record? <laughs> no, just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> like, what a d- move. Two things, two things. Uh, Tim, two, where's where's your good listen. microphone? Also, you, hilarious. I have to respect yeah. it. That's that is a hilarious move. Uh, <laughs> Tim, where's your good microphone? Because you sound terrible. And there we go. That's better. Much now, right? better. Much. Right. Really We've only been doing this. Noise. We've still only been quiet. doing this for seven years. So, um, you know, we're still we're still learning. So um, I feel like I feel like this episode has to launch with the headline. Sorry, dot dot dot. We recorded on Tuesday and just see. <laughs> oh no, wait on on Monday. Monday. Day. Um, uh, I had we had something with the title last week because I I titled the episode "The End of an Era" because it was like the end of the internal combustion era, and we talked about that, and and we did have somebody who's like, "Oh no, they're ending the podcast," and then it was like ten minutes later, like, "Oh, never mind. It was just it was just internal combustion." <laughs> Um, all right. Well, I'm excited for what the future will bring. Um, I'm very happy for you, you, pal. Yeah, I, I do I mean, feel I like there's a sense for, of urgency. For me, I wouldn't be happy for me yet. Currently, I am unemployed. Um, but no, it'll be fine. There's a new sense of urgency for me to spend as much time as possible in aero hospitality setups. Interesting. Or, uh, McLaren hospitality yes. setups. Because yeah. now, like, yeah, I feel I feel really bad for all of the people that. We're 27 fans and then had to buy seven jerseys and now we're going to have to buy something else. Yeah. Well, you know, you're uh, you're making your fans spend a lot of their hard earned money on new gear. But that's all right. Yeah, that's an occupational hazard. Anyways, this is why um, I actually this is a great case in point for why I actually really like F1's approach to numbers. And that a number is a driver's number for their whole career. So that way you can like have merch and build your brand around a number that doesn't change even if you switch teams. Um, It's a great point. It's a great point. Yet another thing F1 does better than us. (laughs) Well, and you know what? For the first time in a long time, they actually had a really exciting race too. So, Well, uh, they did not. They did not. They had a very exciting exciting 10 laps. Yes. That yeah, race was horrifying. It was so it was bad. shockingly boring. I thought that that yes. track usually raced okay, but it, it didn't does. seem like there was really any movement. I actually watched the uh, I actually watched the sprint race this weekend. It was it was weird. Actually, there was a couple good moves in the sprint race. Yeah, um, it was kind of like it was a little bit of a prelude to what happened in the race race too, because you know. Did you watch? Did you see the passes in the sprint for the lead there, mm-hmm. Alejandro? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought it was. I thought I it was cool. Like Lando chucked it no. in there. Verstappen's move coming back on him was unbelievable. It was, it was so very, very good. good. It was so good. 
And <laughs> you might want to switch rooms, bud. I'm not sure I'd want to sleep there. Um, yeah, dude, that move back into four was sick. And then Piastri's move around the outside into five was also sick. Uh, so yeah, we had some fun little racing, which was nice. All right. And then, so let's, let's talk about, uh, Max's move in the actual race. Um, who was it that he, that he kind of took out? Was that Lando? Yeah. It was Lando. It's definitely Lando. Yep. Um, what, um, what did you think? Obviously Alex? I don't know anything about racing, so uh, my opinion doesn't really matter on it. So what did you guys think? Um, your opinion doesn't matter really on anything. Uh, if we're honest, um, <laughs> let's see, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, us unemployed I, guys got to stick together. I, <laughs> that's, that's a great point. I mean, <laughs> technically, technically James is also in that boat. Kind of not really, but <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> what boat is that? Because I <laughs> not knowing what job anything. you have next year. Oh yeah. Dude, hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys, uh, you and I are, I'm an you guys are, on this. <laughs> you guys are equ- you and I are equally as unemployed at the moment. <laughs> we have a contract to the end of the year, and then who knows? Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's cool. Um, what did I think on it? Um, it was a hundred. It was definitely Max's fault. Was it this horrible, terrible thing that everyone that is a Lando fan is making it out to be? No. Um, I do think Max was driving pretty aggressive. He was moving a lot under braking. Like this wasn't the first offense. Like he was, he was driving like a bit of, um, and it was forcing Lando to kind of take these big lunges and take these chances. Cause like traditional racing wasn't really getting the job done. Um, and I have two opinions on that one. It's like Max needs to chill, but on the other standpoint, it's really cool to see someone with 60 odd wins who's been winning for the past three years care that much about still winning. So like, yeah, it was his fault. hundred percent. Yeah. He should have done maybe a better job of not having their contact, having contact happen, but still like it was awesome. So. Yeah. I, I echo that second part so much. What I love about Max is that with 61 wins, you know, he still races like he's going for that first victory. And yes, he pushes it to the absolute limit and sometimes over. And even last Does year, he like push it to the max, Ve- I'm not, I wasn't going to say it. Get I wasn't going to do that. Get out. I Get just, the hell you know, out. Man, <laughs> you better hope you find a job driving because comedy's <laughs> not true. It's not Tim's either. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah, I mean, look at her. So, yes. um, I'm hilarious. Like Vegas looking. last year. He finally took it too far in the game of penalty. So, like, he does go beyond the limit. Um, this one, here's the thing. The actual one that took everybody out was probably the least egregious because he did some moves in the break zone that were way worse. And I thought something should have been called sooner. The time when Lando got there, but then Max went off on the exit, ca- carried the momentum and stayed in front, I absolutely think he should have had to give that position back based on what F1 standards have been and what the stewarding standards have been. Lando got there. They were even at the apex. <clears throat> even though I don't agree with this rule where or understanding where as long as you're front axle to front axle, the guy on the inside can literally drive the guy off the exit. I think that's bull****, but that is their, that's how they do it. And that's what he did. And he should have had to give the position back. The fact that he was also under investigation for going four wheels off for the last, for like the too many th time when part of the reason he went off was because in the middle of the brake zone, Max swerved. And so he had to swerve and upset his braking. Like that's insane. They gave him a five second penalty. That part's like, imagine he'd made the move stick and then they gave him a five second penalty for driving off. Cause he was kind of forced there by Max. Like, I don't know if that's just brilliant by Max or just completely insane by the FIA. I don't know which one gets more credit slash criticism for that. The end of the day, though, the move that um, took them both out, yeah, Max's fault, but no, not the egregious move that everybody was making it out to be, and I think they're more just upset about all the stuff that had happened up to that point. Red Bull puts up their hand and says, hey, we probably should have told Max he had a five-second penalty coming, and he could have just let him go. I'm not sure Max would have, even if he knew that, 
but it's yeah. at least knowledge he probably should have had. Do I know what's hilarious? But is he Toto's radio message to George when it happened? <laughs> nope. Was I mean he got yes. a puncture in turn two. He had to limp back to pit lane, had to do an extra pit stop, got a five second penalty, and still finished three spots ahead of Perez. <laughs> Ten second penalty. <laughs> Ten second penalty. Ten second and penalty. still finished Whatever. three spots ahead of Perez, who couldn't pass the Haas cars. Now remember, wow. he had an eight second lead before two bad pit stops, and that's the only reason Lando was even in the fight, was because he had fresher tires and got to DRS range because Red Bull executed a poor race for the first time in a long time. So he also lost six spots, or sorry, six seconds in the pits over two stops and still finished that far ahead of Perez. Like, wild. Absolutely wild. Um, But here's the thing. Like, I saw this one article that was, because to your point about, like, the media making this such a big deal and hating on Max, and um, this one headline was, Verstappen's clearly not matured or learned anything since 2016 or whatever. And I'm just like, man, whoever wrote that, I've lost so much respect for you as a journalist because that's just so there, there are a hundred examples of things Max has improved and matured on in the last three years. And because your guy gets taken out one time, you're going to say he's still the 16 year old kid, 17 year old kid that showed up to formula one. Like calm down. It's he, two guys going for it. It was a great race at the end. Congrats to George Russell. He stayed out of trouble and got the job done. Good for him. Whatever. And I, <laughs> I know you weren't going to be thrilled with that part, but hey, man, it was a good race. At the end of the day, it ended up being a good race. And here's the thing. I know you said it was boring up to that point, and that's true, but all people care about is the finish. The number of times we've had a boring race that ended with a late caution and a banger finish, and people are like, what a great race. People's memories are short. All they care about is a good finish. So speaking of terrible finishes, did you have any idea what happened in the NASCAR race this weekend? I did. I didn't know there was a NASCAR race this weekend. So they raced at Nashville. Okay. And it took five overtimes to get the race done. They kept crashing that, into each other. How does that even happen? <laughs> like, well, honestly, Tim, I don't know because I was fairly certain that the rule was an attempt. It was over no matter what. Yeah. But that's I guess what I thought it was first that they got rid of that rule a couple of years ago, a bunch of years ago. And so it literally at a green white checkered to the point where like most of the field had to come in and get fuel at some point because they had been doing so many more laps than the advertised distance. I think it is insane that they're allowed to do an unlimited number of restarts. And that's, I, I know you want to finish under green. Like, I know that's the goal. But, like, at some point, man, just let the thing die. Just terrible. <clears throat> but Alex didn't yeah. know that the race I mean, didn't happen. So. Yeah, I didn't know what happened. I just, I feel like that is just quintessentially NASCAR, though. Like, it's, I would almost be upset if, they didn't keep doing it because that's what you sign up for. That's what you want to see. That's what, like, it's exciting. Like, I know it's annoying and it's dumb, but it ultimately is very exciting. Yes. No. You're frozen. So. Sick. What do you think, Tim? <laughs> I, I totally agree with whatever you said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we got, we have a race coming up. Do we want to preview it at all? Anything we should be looking out for? Well, Alex, you're gonna just drive hybrid. Christian Lundgren off the track? No, I don't care. <laughs> um, no, I mean what what you need to talk about and what we need to to talk about is it's it's we yeah we the got time the time has come. It's hybrid time, so I'm trying reverse tomorrow. So hopefully oh, that means it'll be ready for Mid Ohio. Um, in yeah. theory, so we'll one of the start things cars. that a lot of people don't know, yeah, two of the two of the big things is a that the system can start the car in theory and second is that reverse is now operated by the hybrid so there is no reverse gear in the gearbox anymore essentially what you have to do is get the hybrid the mgu to turn the other direction in first gear and that's what makes the car reverse is that an accurate it's statement true. alex yeah so there's yeah, there's no reverse gear. So you're literally it's it's fully electric drive and propulsion. But, but are you 
in first gear. first gear. Sorry, yes, you are in first gear, and the right. motor so spins backwards. So it's just turning backwards. first gear backwards, right? This Correct. is where my concern comes in. <clears throat> you have some very long first gears that you use sometimes. <laughs> So I guess it's electric, so it can't stall though, right? So I guess that's fine. Right, because there's no clutch involvement. There's no clutch. Yeah, that's true. And it's like instant torque. So okay, all right, never mind. That concern goes goes away. But yeah, the concern is that no one's done it yet. So we need to make sure it works. What's going to be before. weird is just pressing the throttle and going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the stop, you know, strange. like that's going to be a very strange sensation. Um, why, why, why is that different? Because there's no clutch and the, the engine's oh. at idle. It's just the electric motors that doing all the drive. So the engine note won't change. It'll just sit there idling, but you'll just be throttling the thing backwards on the battery. What? Yeah. On the <laughs> ultra capacity. How does it sound <sighs> when you, when you engage the hybrid? Never done it. Okay. I meant like in general, but like not just in reverse. Well, you don't no, hear like it like you wouldn't, track. you wouldn't hear it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, like, okay, so we are going to Unfortunately, Ohio. fans will have no idea. No. Well, they will because we at NBC have built some graphics for you, and we are going to show when it's being used or not. Oh, um, really? Okay. Yeah. That's so scary. Kind of cool. That's terrifying. Well, here's the thing is you, you can't lie now because <laughs> we're all going to be watching. Um, I'll, I'll leave it to you guys as, as, as uh, viewers to find out for yourself this weekend. So – so, so, all right. So here's the real thing, right? So we're going now. We find it's finally here. We're finally doing it, and it is been widely reported from conversations with drivers that it's like it's cool. You feel it, but it's also not half a second a lap, right? It's not going to make or break your day necessarily. So in the race, I think it'll actually, from what I hear, what I understand from talking to drivers, it's probably going to be used. I don't know if sparingly is the right word, but it's not necessarily going to be the most consistent thing, right? Um, it's not something that drivers are planning to use every single lap to the maximum available energy limit. For sure. Buying, however, <laughs> is a different story. I, I think the hybrid is going to be more interesting on a Saturday than it is on a Sunday. You're absolutely right. And and I think that's the the best way to look at it and for people to kind of approach their um, opinions and their expectations going into this weekend is it's not, it isn't what an F1 hybrid system is. It's not what Kurs is when it first came out. Um, it is a, a relatively, it's not a simple system because it's actually very complex, but the, the, the architecture is relatively simple. And that was done for a lot of different reasons. Um, a lot of which we've already discussed. There's a great video that IndyCar produced that James is talking about the reasons why we did the things that we did. Pay attention to it in qualifying because that is there. There is a lot that that can have an impact of of um, the car balance, um, how you approach the lap, how you approach multiple laps in a row, um, how you get the timing of the system right with you know your tire temps and your gap and, and all that sort of thing. So I think I think qualifying is going to be really interesting for people. I think the race you're still going to see the exact same product that you've seen for the past decade, um, and the hybrid is going to be largely invisible. But also there's some beauty to that because in your road car, if you have a hybrid road car, you don't really notice that working either. Like that's kind of the whole point is to have electrical power that is still that's it, purely a support system to the same framework that we know and love and that's the v6 engine that we have so safe to say everyone will use it on starts and restarts you can use it in conjunction with overtake which was explained in that video as you mentioned uh so a lot of passes a lot you're of gonna see a lot of, lot of buttons, a lot of pushing. Um, so it, it regens automatically. It can be regen yes. manually, but everyone's going to run it automatically. And then it deploys when the driver wants to deploy. Um, I imagine in laps and out laps will be another time when that's something that you'll use it, maybe, probably, potentially. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, just because we always talk about how important those are. And if that gives you that extra 10th of a second, every bit helps. But then, yeah, outside yeah. of that, I think it's going to be very driver specific, team specific on, on how much it's used. Um, it's funny though. You you mentioned that video. So we made that video and it's like, you know, hybrid or innovation, blah, blah, blah. And all these comments on the videos, people are like, Oh, hybrid's been around forever. Every series is doing hybrid. You guys are late. You're not innovating anything. It's like, dude, watch the video. You're right. Yes, that is all true. But nobody is doing it the way that IndyCar is doing it. Our system is very unique, and we're the only racing series that's doing this. So, like, calm down, everybody. Like, we we know that F1 said hybrid for 10 years. You mean people comment on things without watching or reading them? <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> oh, man. All um, right. Well, got some, got some stuff to look forward to. Got some good do. racing. Uh, yep. Alex, excited, uh, excited for this next chapter, wherever it's going to be. Learn about uh, the or, future. Or it's just going to be three unemployed guys next year. <laughs> like, <Isn't> it- <laughs> hey, guys, we'll have a lot more time for the podcast next year. We're going to be tripling <laughs> down on our content creation. I uh, oh. I went and did a... Um, oh, wait, you played a round of golf this week. How'd that go? Or weekend? I did. I also I also got stuck in a thunderstorm on a bike. Um, yes. Let's just say the golf and the bike ride were uh, equally as successful. Um, <laughs> so you only got halfway and then like Kelly had to pick you to... up on the way home? No, it's not that. It's just that I got through nine holes and was pretty over it by that yeah. point. Because I'm just not, I'm not good enough yet. So it was cool. The idea of it's cool. I still enjoy it. I just need to swing a lot more bats. And by bats, That's I mean... Fair. Mitts clubs. and by mitts, clubs, I mean the, the clubs. Yeah, third time's the charm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, well, good luck this weekend. Everybody have fun, and uh, Alex, figure out whatever the hell is happening in that hotel room next to yours. Um, it's it might be in a, an egregious Canada Day celebration, so I'd be remiss to not wish everybody a happy Canada Day because that's when we're recording, even though it's now closer to. Or wait, it'll be the 4th. It will be on the 4th. Yeah. Right. So happy 4th yeah, of July, everybody. Fourth. Happy Canada Day. Happy, happy Real July. Independence Day. Happy late uh, time Canada politely asked for independence. And the and pretty much got said, it. Kind of. Pretty much no, got it. not really. The king yeah. can dissolve your parliament. You're not free. Yeah, but he's not gonna. So. <laughs> Don't love that he can, though. Yeah, but he can't <laughs> like, really. <laughs> Basically, all, is it, all it means is that we have the queen or king on our money and we still have all the use in our words everything else is we're, we're pretty independent otherwise anyway enjoy your fourth light some fireworks blow some up have a good time most importantly make sure you watch the race yeah. on sunday if you're not there with the fire no, don't do that i wasn't be encouraging smart. that be smart why, why I do know. you make it sound like i was encouraging it sound like you were hmm. mm. are we gonna set off some fireworks at the track alex we should do that I mean, I set off fireworks like in February, so just let me know. Just on your driveway in the middle of winter, much to the chagrin of your neighbors. Yes, I know. Yeah, I am definitely (laughs) one of those neighbors. Or aimed at Dixon's house. (laughs) This has been Off Track with Hinch and Rossi. Off Track is part of the Sirius XM Sports Podcast Network. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, please give us a five-star rating and leave a review. Subscribe today wherever you stream your podcasts. We're at Ask Off Track on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to follow us on Twitter individually, I'm at Hinchtown. He's Alexander Rossi. And if you want to follow Tim, though we have no idea why you would, he's at the Tim Durham on Twitter. Follow us on YouTube and subscribe to our channel for exclusive video content. Off Track is produced by Tim Durham, and by that we mean Tim. <laughs>